the Chinese Communist Party celebrates, I guess that's the right word, its 100th birthday uh, this uh, summer. Um, it's the only um, big Leninist party still in power in any country around the world. So I suppose uh, that's something that they'll be very pleased about in Beijing. I, I say Leninists seriously rather than communist or Marxist, because it's not in any sense Marxist. When you look at the uh, figures for social inequity in China, you see that very clearly. It's a Leninist party. It's all about the brute exercise uh, of central power. Now, it is true that in the last few years, the Chinese Leninist party um, has presided over very rapid and welcome economic growth. To that extent, it's been following in the footsteps of the so-called Asian economic tiger, uh, tigers like um, Japan, South Korea, Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, which recovered extraordinarily rapidly uh, and before China from, uh, in Japan's case, nuclear war and um, overall for, for, from the conventional uh, horrors of the Second World War. But what's happened in, in China since, uh, uh, it, since Deng Xiaoping uh, is, is very welcome. Um, the fact that it's depended, of course, on the opening up of uh, Western markets, um, that it's depended to some extent um, on a bit of cheating and intellectual property theft, that's something um, I think is widely recognized. What it hasn't done is, as so many people, somebody people deluded themselves thinking, it hasn't led to an opening up of the politics at the same time as to some extent the economy has been opened up but that economic growth uh, is welcome and as I say it's happened elsewhere in Asia without the necessity of the sort of brutal exercise of power that we've seen in China. Now to a very considerable extent uh, people in Hong Kong represent refugees and um, probably well over a majority of them from some of the worst aspects of Chinese communist uh, rule. Um, people who fled the Great Leap Forward, um, the Great Famine with its horrible stories of death and cannibalism, um, the Cultural Revolution, people like uh, Jimmy Lai, who's now been thrown in prison uh, with his assets seized. Uh, people like Jimmy Lai, who uh, came to Hong Kong, they stowed away, they swam, they scrambled over razor sharp by barbed wire to get away from communism. And you can't now expect people in Hong Kong any more than in Taiwan or elsewhere to regard love of China being the same thing as loving the Communist Party. The Communist Party is something from which they sought refuge. Now, why has the uh, Chinese regime in Beijing, why has the Leninist Beijing chosen recently to start to dismantle the freedoms and values which made Hong Kong special and made it a haven for all those who were trying to get away from communism. Uh, I, I think that um, it's, there's no question that what you're seeing in, in Hong Kong, what you have seen in Hong Kong, is the attempt to prevent um, any democratic expression of view, uh, to end uh, freedom of speech and freedom of inquiry and freedom of the press, to engineer the souls of young people in, in uh, Hong Kong by, by um, imposing on them a communist uh, curriculum. Uh, and of course, in every, since, in every way, to start to erode the rule of law since the Chinese Leninists don't actually believe that there is a distinction that should be drawn uh, between, um, between the legislature, the judiciary, um, and the, uh, the executive. They think everything should be communist executive. So the Quisling regime um, that, alas, um, has presided with heaps of infamy on its head for decades uh, uh, in front of us, the Quisling regime has connived at the turning Hong Kong into an appendage of the Chinese surveillance state, state with what was once admired as Asia's finest police service, now not serving the people of Hong Kong, but serving the Ministry of State Security uh, in, in, in Beijing. And of course, it's worth pointing out that those Quislings who've been doing Beijing communists, Leninists as bid, bidding, um, have in many cases themselves got foreign passports for their families um, and loved ones. So 
uh, they can get out uh, if they want something they want to deny to anybody uh, in Hong Kong who simply believes in the values which made Hong Kong such a special international uh, city. They've crushed the communist democracy. They're crushing freedom, putting it in handcuffs. Uh, they're crushing uh, freedom of speech. And the Quislings um, are simply going along with that, as we've seen in the case of Apple Daily, uh, to, to get rid of Apple Daily, which they hated because its proprietor had been what himself a refugee from communism and somebody who'd criticized Chinese behavior with the massacre of people in and around Tiananmen Square in 1989. Uh, they have pursued him and his newspaper with a single-minded vengefulness, which I think has earned the world's contempt. So why have the Chinese Communist Party done this, or Leninist Party done this? Why, um, why have they risked the world's um, contempt for the way in which they've demonstrated that you just can't trust a word they say, breaking the joint declaration and all the promises made to Hong Kong. Uh, why have uh, uh, they risked being regarded uh, not as, as, as providing a model for the rest of the world to follow, but as, the, as a model for the rest of the world to uh, treat with considerable dislike, disdain, uh, and to try to prevent bullying uh, other and coercing other countries? They've done that, in my view, because the one thing they're really terrified out of above all, they're not, they're not secure in their boots, uh, these uh, Leninist bosses in Beijing. Um, what they're terrified of is the freedoms which Hong Kong reflects. Uh, Hong Kong is a danger, they think, because people in Hong Kong do believe in a value system covering civil society, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, uh, free press, um, and the ability to increasingly hold their leaders to account represent values which um, the Chinese Communist Party recognized sooner or later will bring their own regime crashing down. Uh, I don't think that uh, the ideas that um, people in Hong Kong have held on to so bravely, I don't think those ideas are going to be snuffed out. Uh, I think they will survive long after the Chinese Leninist regime has been swept into the ash can of history. So I hope people won't entirely lose faith, uh, even if they have uh, the awful, awful experience to go through of seeing on their streets of Hong Kong the brutalities of Chinese Len Leninism uh, inflicted in their own great city. Uh, so my own uh, view is uh, for Hong Kong is that uh, freedom at the moment, having a tough time, but freedom will one day reign once more in Hong Kong.